Hi everybody, this is Michael. I'm back here on YouTube and today I would like to show you the import process of Capture One Eleven. Alright, let's get to work and um, today I um, have uh, some new pictures. Let's assume we went out to a little field trip to Iceland and we want to import these pictures to our new Capture 111. Um, there is not a lot new stuff um, coming for Capture 111 when it comes to the import, but I still would like to show how it works so that you guys have an updated um, little tutorial. All right, so we went out to beautiful Iceland and have some shoots here on the memory card, um, basically raw files from my Canon. And um, we want to put them in now into Capture One, of course. This is my studio um, folder or my studio uh, hard drive, which I have here. It's a four terabyte hard drive. Um, we want to import these images into this hard drive. And um, for this we just use basically Capture One. So what we do is we open Capture One 11 and it will load my old uh, Capture One session which is empty at the moment but it doesn't matter. We just do a new one. We say file new session and then here we can say where we would like to have the session stored. So in my case I go to my studio um, say drop, I say um, photo drops, and I say 2017, and I say Joe's. Um, from here on, now I can say, um, or I can give it a name, and I would say it is 2017 10, I think it was the 14th of October, and I say Iceland. Sorry, Iceland. Land. Here we go. And here I basically give it a name. This name it describes, will make a new uh, folder in this path. So I will get a new folder in here, 2017, with this name. And inside this folder I will get all these subfolders. Capture, selects, output, trash. And um, yeah, the capture name is what I gave it here. Alright, um, I say open in a new window just because I have already one window open. And now we are here in our brand new blank session in Capture One. Now to import the images from the um, external um, SD card or whatever card or drive you have, you click this little um, icon over here on the left upper side. You could also go through File, Import Images and um, this little import image uh, import window opens and now we can still like and as you can see compared to capture one nine it's basically the same there is one little thing i could see um, which they um, put in but we will go through it and i will point it out all right so we have our import from is uh, the source we say choose folder and now we go to our um, desktop. I go to my imaginable. I will go to my memory card and here I see all my pictures. I say open and now I have to wait and now all these beautiful images open from my visit actually like a only a couple of hours with it, but yeah, a couple of hours with it in um, beautiful Iceland. And as you can see, I have not so many pictures here in this session, but this is just because I would like to show you, um, or don't want to make you wait so long. All right, so I can see here, down here, I have some images which are not, which don't belong to um, Iceland. So what I want to do now is I want to just select the ones I really want. Let's say this. What I can do is I can just go to the first image I want, go down to the last image I really want, which would be this one here. Click Shift or Hold Shift and then click here on the last image. And then I can let Shift go and it will be all selected. It says 80 out of 86 images selected. This is exactly what I want. And um, 
Now I could say include subfolders if I had subfolders on my memory card, which should be not the case, but it could, in, could be the case for some reason. I usually never have subfolders for images, but um, that can depend, that depends. And um, we have exclude and duplicates. That's the new point here in Capture 111. And you um, basically can avoid to import images which are like already in the session. That basically is when you um, add more images to a session, not at the initial transfer. All right, so now we go through the menu. Okay, we did all this here. Now we say our import to is the session folder. I would say it's the capture folder. I love to have everything into the capture folder so I know all my captures, all my raw photos and images are in the capture folder. So it's very nice and straightforward. Um, if you like to do a subfolder, you can do that. I, as I say, I keep everything in one capture folder, but let's say you have like 10,000 photos and you want to have subfolders, then you could go ahead and put something in here and you could say, um, let's say maybe I only want to um, import folder uh, pictures of the ocean. I would just select the ocean pictures and I would create a subfolder named ocean. So it would automatically put all these images on the right side here into the subfolder ocean. All right, I don't want to do that now. I delete that subfolder. I go ahead and just mark all the pictures I want. All right, here we go. Um, here it says uh, my sample path, where does it go? It goes into my capture. Oops, let's do that again. Sorry for that. Here we go. Let's see if I can make that a little bit more. Here we go. Maybe it's a little bit better to see now. Um, here it is again, where does it go? My um, capture folder, how much space I have left. All right, so now we go ahead and we say backup. I can do backups, which is really helpful. So every time I import pictures into my session, I could do an automatic uh, backup of all these images. Um, you could select um, a uh, folder location here, select folder location if you want to do that. I usually don't do it. I have my um, manual or my automatically set up um, backup process and so I don't need that at this point. All right, we have the naming. I sometimes change the naming, sometimes not. A little bit, it's a little bit depending on the project. Um, just to give you a short introduction how you can do it, if you click on these three dots here on the right side, you could go ahead and either leave the image name how it is, or you could play around and you could say, well, I want to have them renamed. And I want to use, um, let's say, I want to use um, my camera serial. That's a little bit foolish, but I mean, okay, some people want to do that, um, especially because they want to, they shoot with multiple cameras and they want to know, oh, which image was shot with which, like, camera, right? So you could later on go ahead and put the camera serial in. You could do your altitude if you would like, um, if you have a GPS in your camera, color tag, contact, city, contact, contact. There's so much stuff to, to go through, basically. This really depends on your... Um, like preference, what you want to do. A lot of people just leave it how it is. Um, and what I sometimes do is I just change it either to, um, let's say, I want to have the date in. So I go to the date. We can actually, we should not do the date here. We could do the date on the creator's title, um, the current day of month. No, now I have to search it actually. <laughs> Here, image date. Here we go. Um, so you could put in the image date uh, and you can do a right click here. You can um, choose between different formats, of course. You could put in the hour, the minutes, the seconds. Here's an example actually how it would look like. This is actually how it is. Um, or here, like this format or this format. I don't like all these formats too much, I have to say. Um, maybe in the US you want to have this format. I don't like I don't like it so much, but well, for the tutorial, we just use it for now. And I would say underscore, um, and then I would just say Iceland. Um, and then I would maybe give it a counter. And um, you can put in a counter over here. You have a one digit counter, which would be not 
enough of course we would have like a, let's say a three digit counter and it would look like this so here you can see it starts at um, 001 um, and if you start with a four digit counter it starts as a 0001 so it can go up all the way to 9999 all right in my case I just go with a three digit counter I could also like now save it as a preset over here I don't want to do this now I say okay and now my images will be renamed, like it says here. Um, you can give it a job name, you, untitled job. Yes, well, you can say, um, oh, you wear for some magazine, I don't know, for the outdoor magazine. Outdoor magazine, I don't know, Iceland, travel. Here we go. And then in the next step, you could in your metadata. So let's say in my um, case, it would be my name, first and last name. And you can give it a description as well. You could say, well, um, Iceland, oops, sorry, Iceland 2017. Um, you could make like, I mean, you could just put in whatever you like there, basically whatever helps you to know what these images are about. All right, adjustments, as I said also in my previous tutorial, basically there's nothing else um, what I do usually. Some people have styles, built-in styles, they want to have their black and white uh, stuff. I usually do that in a later stage, not on in this um, stage, so I remove that here. Um, Auto-adjust, I would never do auto-adjust, to be honest. I like the first thing I usually do when I get a new version, I remove the auto adjust from on the right side over here because auto adjust just you just don't want to do it. Like it never gives you the um, the the images like the I mean you just don't want to do it. <laughs> auto adjust is something which never works out for me at least, and I really don't like it, and so I would never click it here. And um, include existing adjustments basically means if you import stuff which like was already edited somewhere else um, in another Capture One version, you could click that. I usually don't click it. I just want to have my images when I import them, of course, from a memory card, completely clean and a fresh start. All right, so at the file info here down under adjustments, you can basically see the image name, the date, the image was created, um, the camera I used and the size. It's just like a little um, info screen. All right, um, we are done with all this stuff over here. Let's go here on the left lower side, import uh, collection, open collection, notify when done, or never open import collection. I usually leave it on open collection when import starts so I can see what's going on. Um, you can could eject the external um, card after it is um, imported. Yes, no, up to you. Um, erase images after copying. I would never do this. Um, if you erase them, it is of course helpful to automate that process, but um, be aware that once they are done, uh, image, the images are deleted, they are deleted on your memory card and maybe you want to keep them as long as possible um, just as a backup on location so you have it in multiple locations. That is um, pretty helpful. So I leave this off and yeah, let's go ahead and import all this 79 images. Just click here. And now we can see on the right side how everything comes in. We see our activities here that pops up. And I have to say it goes pretty quick. Um, compared to Capture One 9, I feel this is a little bit quicker. That um, is a good thing, to be honest. And now we're just waiting. And you could also see here on the right side the image name change to what we wanted to have, like it's like the date um, when the image was captured and our Iceland tag and then um, a dot dot one, a dot dot two, dot dot three, and so forth. All right, let's just wait until everything comes in. Yeah, these are the activities now. Um, now it generates um, previews. Um, the preview size, it should be still under the preferences when you go to Capture 111. And you should be able to change it here under uh, the tab image. Preview image size in pixel 2560. I figured this is one of the best settings I like need for my um, usage. I have like a Retina MacBook Pro and I have a big BenQ monitor and this is 
perfectly fine for the preview image size. Um, you could go higher, takes up a little bit more space and takes a little bit more time. And you could go lower all the way to 640. I don't know who uses 640. This is like a super low quality, so I would not suggest this one. I would suggest something around 1920 up to, let's say, 2800, something around here. As I said, 2500 for me works the best. All right. All right, so now the images are all imported and I could browse through them, I could check them out. Um, at this point I also could start editing the images in the different tabs over here on the left side, but this will be part of another tutorial. Um, we just have a quick look in our um, hard drives. So what happened in the background while we were importing that stuff? So let's see, we are here in my main library, Photodrop 2017. Iceland folder was created and into this Iceland folder there is now a, a folder capture and in, all, in this capture folder are all the images from the memory cards renamed and ready to go. Alright, so this would sum it up and if you enjoyed it just leave us a little comment or a thumbs up or maybe a suggestion what else you want to hear about and you want to um, learn about in Capture One or everything about photography and um, yeah, we will follow up with this. I wish you a beautiful 2018, it's coming up um, in a couple of hours here in Los Angeles and talk to you soon, hopefully in 2018. Alright, have a good one, bye bye.